Now to the Republican presidential race, which has turned into a national dead heat. Nowhere more so than in Iowa, where the first votes will be cast in two weeks. From the moment Newt Gingrich emerged as the latest Republican frontrunner, attacks began to clog Iowa's airwaves. From a group representing former Freddie Massachusetts Mac Governor Mitt Romney. Collapse, but Gingrich cashed in. Freddie Mac paid Newt $30,000 an hour, $1.6 million. From Texas Congressman Ron Paul. He's demonstrating himself to be the very essence of the Washington insiders. It's about serial hypocrisy. And today, in this new ad from Texas Governor Rick Perry. Newt got rich, made millions off of Freddie Mac. As the criticisms have multiplied, Gingrich's lead has crumpled. Gallup, which has tracked public opinion daily, showed the former House Speaker's once commanding 15-point national lead has all but evaporated, down 11 points from 37 percent to 26 percent in the last 10 days. Two other national polls show the same erosion. CNN shows Romney and Gingrich in a dead heat at 28 percent, with Paul at 14. And an ABC News Washington Post survey out today places Gingrich and Romney at 30 percent, with Paul once again a distant third. Gingrich, who has less money to spend than his primary competitors, has said he will remain positive. Others seem to be more focused on attacks rather than moving the country forward. That's up to them. Campaigning in Iowa yesterday, he called the ads criticizing him negative junk. I will do two things. I'll tell you what I stand for and what I'm going to try to accomplish. And second, I will answer any question that comes up based on the false and inaccurate advertising of some of my friends. But I really wish they would have the courage to be positive. And I wish they would have the courage to have a campaign in which we matched ideas. We didn't see whose consultant could be the nastier or whose consultant could run the more clever, destructive ad. But with yet another frontrunner's momentum blunted and many voters open to changing their minds, the two-week final stretch leading up to the Iowa caucuses remains wide open. The short-term beneficiary appears to be President Obama, whose approval ratings are creeping upward as Republicans take aim at each other. For more on the campaign, we're joined by Stuart Rothenberg of the Rothenberg Political Report and contributor to Roll Call Newspaper, and Susan Page, Washington Bureau Chief for USA Today. Susan, we have been to this rodeo before. We saw the rise and fall of Michelle Bachman, the rise and fall of Rick Perry, the rise and fall of Herman Cain. Now the rise and slide of Newt Gingrich. What's behind all this? Well, I think you have uh, probably at least have maybe a majority of Republican primary and caucus goers who want some alternative uh, to, to, uh, to Mitt Romney. And they've gone from one of these social conservative candidates to another, and each has been found wanting, and so they go on to the next one. That the, This could end up with uh, Romney's nomination uh, because there is too many of the candidates dividing up this part of the Republican electorate. But we still see other people who seem to be benefiting. Rick Santorum got a big conservative endorsement today in Iowa. Ron Paul does consistently well in these in these polls, or at least he always seems to be a factor, and there's now worry that he might actually win in Iowa, yeah, well, worry among Republicans. Right. Uh, people are falling off of Gingrich because they really didn't examine him before they decided to support him. And so now he's, he's being attacked across the board in a variety of ways, particularly as being a Washington insider and not really a conservative. And so conservatives are looking for somebody else, and they're going to a variety of people. There's no doubt that Ron Paul is now a force in Iowa. You talk to some people, they think that he, he absolutely has a chance to win the state and that the race may ultimately boil down over the next uh, 10 days to uh, Ron Paul and Mitt Romney. What is it about Ron Paul that is appealing? Well, he's, he's very clear in his philosophy. Uh, he's got a core of support, and it's young, it's tech-savvy, it uh, uses social media. It's been with him for four years. He's run before for president. But I disagree with uh, Stuart, although he's, of course, much brighter than I am, so I worry about disagreeing. I don't think this will ever come down to a battle between Romney and Ron Paul, because I don't think Ron Paul is seen as a credible nominee for the party. There will be an alternative to Romney that is other than Ron Paul. We don't know whether it be Gingrich or Perry or someone else. I was talking about Iowa, uh, not long term. But uh, what no, is I, not credible about Ron Paul is that his foreign policy. Well, he just there's a ceiling, on, right? There's a ceiling on Ron Paul, particularly on foreign policy, but also on some cultural issues, drugs and the like. Uh, he is he, he his support is very intense. Uh, it's very deep. It's just not very wide. And he's the kind of person who can get every single Ron Paul supporter out to the caucuses on, as they say, a cold, snowy winter night. And so that makes him a force in Iowa. But in terms of breadth in other states, 
it just isn't there. But let me just say this, Susan, <laughs> you're picking a fight with me, that um, if Ron Paul finishes first or second, he becomes a very complicating factor mm -hmm. for others in the race, other, particularly other than Mitt Romney. Romney would be, I think, rather happy or at least contented if, if Ron Paul happens to win in Iowa. So is what happens in Iowa translated into what happens in New Hampshire or South Carolina or nationally? We look at these national polls, but we're really talking about a primary race. Here. I think it absolutely does. It has a big effect. For instance, if Ron Paul wins in Iowa, it is, that is uh, uh, Mitt Romney's dream come true. <laughs> Uh, because uh, it, uh, it, it means there'll be a lot of focus on that. It means that no one else has managed to coalesce and get the kind of catapult out of Iowa that they would want to have to contest uh, Mitt Romney down the road, for instance, in Florida. Um, so it is a complicating thing. But it means, what I think what a Ron Paul victory would mean is, you know, we usually say there are three tickets out of Iowa. The first three candidates can go on to New Hampshire. I think if Ron Paul wins, there are probably four tickets out of Iowa. And this race goes on for a bit for longer than maybe we expect. We just heard Jeff Brown talk about the, the incredible gridlock, which is now set in once again on Capitol Hill, the shenanigans happening in Washington. Does that resonate at all on the campaign trail, especially for people who are currently sit sitting members of Congress? Well, I, I don't think as much in the Republican race. Now, it has long-term implications, potentially, for the president. I think it does explain some of the president's poll numbers inching up, and it is wonderful talking points long-term for the Democrats. I'm not sure it has immediate impact in Iowa for the Republicans. What about the, what does this tell us about the president's standing? And, of course, in the end, the president won't be running against the Republican Congress. He'll be running against a Republican nominee who's probably not going to be a member of Congress. But it gives him a great talking point. It reminds me a little of what happened in 1995 when the Newt Gingrich-led House Republicans had a budget showdown with President Clinton. President Clinton wasn't doing that well at that point going into his re-election year. They shut down the government over the holidays. We all remember that. And that gave uh, President Clinton the kind of boost that he kept all the way through to an easy re-election. And there wasn't a shutdown in 2008, but there was also the, the spectacle of John McCain, remember, canceling his campaign and rushing back to Washington to help solve another budget crisis, which ultimately helped Barack Obama. Well, this has, you know, this has all the earmarks of the president acting as the grown-up while the uh, Republicans and Democrats in Congress bicker, and, and President Obama can say, look, you got to work together. We got, we're all in this together. It just, it just gives him a, a, uh, an opportunity to sell himself as a leader and somebody who's above politics. And that's always good to be above politics. What do these surveys tell us about how the pres who the president would rather run against based on what Americans are saying, Romney or Gingrich? I don't, I don't think you need a poll to tell you that. Just look at what the White House does. Who do they talk yeah. about? Who do they attack? They attack Mitt Romney 100 percent of the time, occasionally a gesture toward Newt Gingrich. But uh, it's clear that the White House believes Mitt Romney is the more formidable general election candidate. And so by attacking him now, they can either prevent him from getting the nomination or rough him up a little for the general election. Now, Stuart, I want to ask, and this by asking something about something you do every year at this time, which is you do a final column about the most amazing events or the most uh, significant event, political events of the year. And that column came out today. And I just want to ask you about one of your conclusions, the most noteworthy political development. Um, I wrote that a few days ago, Gwen, so I'm not sure so I remember, but I think I, I think I said it was the demise of uh, the yeah. Iowa straw poll. And um, I think we might actually be seeing something bigger in the works here, the demise of Iowa. Maybe that's an overstatement. But if Ron Paul wins Iowa after Michelle Bachman winning the straw poll, if Ron Paul wins Iowa and we all say, well, but that doesn't really mean anything, what does it say about Iowa? So if I was a uh, chairman of the Iowa Republican Party, I'd be a little concerned here that the state's credibility is being undercut. But this is not the first time Iowa has not nominated the person who went on to win the, the nomination. No, but I, but I think that Ron Paul is kind of in a different category in terms of his ability to, to sell nationally. Sure, Mike Huckabee uh, won Iowa before, and he was less last time, and he was not the nominee. But I think with Ron Paul, he is, he is often regarded for most Republicans, not libertarians, as outside the Republican mainstream. Agreed. And, you know, Iowa, this might be enough to keep Ron Paul from winning because Iowa voters are so sophisticated and they're so um, invested in the caucuses being important that I think this line of argument over the next two weeks might help some of these other candidates and, and hurt Ron and Paul. And, boy, are we going to get... Am I going to get emails from Ron Paul supporters <laughs> yes, now? Yes, I think they're already in your inbox. <laughs> yeah. But it's nice, it when you, nice when you two agree, at the very least. Susan Page, Sue Rothenberg, thanks, thanks a lot.